Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be taking a look at another item that I picked up to augment my M1 MacBook Air, a portable SSD from SanDisk. Being a base model, my MacBook only came with 256 gigs of storage. Hardly enough for someone running a YouTube channel. So I knew I was going to need some form of external drive to transfer and hold all of my raw footage in between video uploads. I ended up going with a SanDisk Extreme SSD version 2 with an advertised max read write speed of 1000 Mbps. What I have here is 500 gigs, but they also come in 1, 2, and 4 terabyte variants. Before we get into the details, I should say that this video was not sponsored and I purchased this device at full price. This portable SSD is small enough to sit in the palm of your hand and fits easily into any pocket or tech organizer. The ABS and silicon exterior shell should keep it intact from falling from a height of up to 2 meters, and it has an IP55 water resistance rating to protect it from accidental spills. You'll have to be extra clumsy to drop it though as the finish is quite grippy, so it shouldn't slip out of your hands or off of an uneven table, though it can also make it harder to stuff down a really tight pocket. There's a cutout for a carabiner in case you want to dangle it off of your bag, but this thing is so tiny I doubt anyone will transport it in that manner. In the box, you'll also find a short but sturdy looking USB-C to USB-C cable along with a handy USB-A adapter. You need to match up the arrows on the cable otherwise it won't sit flush. Connecting it to my computer didn't require any additional setup or formatting and the device was quickly detected when plugged in. The stiff cable made it protrude awkwardly from the side of the laptop and I couldn't really position it any other way without using a longer cable. I found two encryption software installers preloaded in the device, which are for Mac and PC respectively. But I decided not to use them for now as I don't intend to store sensitive files on this device. I ran some tests using Amorphous Disk Mark to validate the claimed transfer speeds, and strangely, it capped out at around 640 MB read and 680 MB write. Not even close to the advertised 1000 Mbps read and write speeds. This test was performed with the SSD plugged in directly to an M1 MacBook which is supposedly equipped with Thunderbolt ports, so I was a little disappointed to find that it couldn't achieve the max speed. It could be a driver issue or perhaps the technology on the max Thunderbolt ports aren't 100% matched to that of the SSD. But if you're looking to buy this device for the speeds printed on the box, you might want to do more research on compatibility with the specific device you're planning to plug it into. I'll be reaching out to SanDisk and Apple to get to the bottom of this and I'll make sure to update the video description when I have a clearer understanding of what is causing the nerfed speeds. That said, when I defected from PC to the M1 Mac, I learned that I shouldn't always be swayed by the numbers on paper and instead base my judgment on real-world use. Some reviews on this device suggested it could be used for editing, so I went ahead and tested this out myself. I'm glad to report that this is true at least for 1080p files, and this video you're watching right now was edited and exported entirely on the SSD without moving the raw footage to my laptop's internal drive. Granted, it took a minute or two longer than if I was exporting off of locally saved videos, but being able to keep the raw files in an external drive saves me a lot of cleanup work, and I can now dedicate my internal storage to other things that need it, like installing more useful apps. I did notice some heat buildup on the device as I was working but nothing too alarming and it quickly dissipated when the heavier tasks were finished. The SanDisk Extreme SSD is backed by a generous 5-year manufacturer warranty, and I had no trouble registering my unit, though I am very careful with my gear and with the rugged construction I doubt I'll ever have to worry about it. For my particular use case, this external SSD already functions like an expansion to my limited internal drive. Not only can I create videos off of it, the extra capacity also means I can hang on to more raw footage that I might need to reuse down the road. The links are down in the description if you're interested in this device. Purchasing through my affiliate links helps support the channel at no additional cost to you. Leave a thumbs up down below if you liked the video and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more gear reviews. Until next time, this is Paulo for All Things Considered. Have a good day.